Hello YouTubers, my name is David and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add a custom water cooling loop to your gaming PC to get the best performance out of your system. All of the parts that I'm going to be using in this video will be linked in the video description. So without further ado, let's take a look at the components that you're going to need. First, you're going to need a water block for your CPU. Be sure to buy one that's compatible with your chipset. If you plan on GPU water cooling, you can buy a water block for your GPU as well. Next, you're going to need a reservoir and a pump. The set that I have can be used together to fit into your 5 and a quarter inch drive bays. I like bay mounted reservoirs and pumps because you don't have to drill holes in your case or use adhesives to mount them. Next, you're going to need a radiator. You can use multiple radiators if your case can fit them, but be sure to measure the distance between the top of your motherboard and the top of your case because some double thick radiators won't be able to fit because of clearance issues and in that case you would have to use a low profile radiator. You also need fans for your radiator. Be sure to buy ones that are optimized for static pressure as opposed to airflow. You want the ones with thick fins as opposed to thin fins. Also be careful what screws you're using to attach fans to your radiator because if you use the wrong screws, ones that are too long especially, you could pierce the fins of your radiator. Next, you're going to need tubing. You can buy it in any color and there are different sizes to choose from. I went with 3 8 inner diameter and 5 8 outer diameter because Linus said so, but also because it's a good balance between flow efficiency and not being too wide. Tubing that's too wide can kink when trying to bend it, so you have more flexibility with using thinner tubing. 10 feet is more than enough for most water cooling builds. Moving forward, you also need compression fittings to connect your tubing. This is the six pack by Monsoon. And it also comes with a tool for tightening down your compression fittings. I would also recommend getting a few right angle or 45 degree connectors. These are by Bits Power and getting these right angle connectors can help you connect tubing without having to bend it too much. Alternatively, you could get some barbs and hose clamps it's not a bad idea to buy one of these and maybe two or three hose clamps because due to clearance issues, you might not always be able to use a compression fitting. So the combination of straight compression fittings, right angle or 45 degree compression fittings and barbs and hose clamps will make sure that you will be able to have the most efficient loop possible. Finally, you need some liquid coolants. I always just like using distilled water. You can buy specially made coolants that are of different colors but those coolants always seem to gunk up after a while and considering how much they cost, they don't present much performance advantage over regular distilled water. First, we need to disassemble the pump so it can fit inside the reservoir. Remove the four screws that are securing the pump to its housing. Next, unscrew the nut attaching the pump to its housing, but remember to remove the o-ring from the pump's housing because we're going to use it again later. You can set everything except the pump and the o-ring off to the side. Place the o-ring atop the pump. Then, look for the pump adapter that came with your reservoir and then place the pump over it as shown. Next, we're going to place the pump assembly into the reservoir, making sure the holes in the pump adapter are aligned with the screwdriver holes and the screw holes on the reservoir. Look for four long screws that came with your reservoir and place the two that are going to be most difficult to access into the pump assembly first before placing it into the reservoir. Align your last two screws for four total and using the screwdriver holes in your reservoir, tighten everything down. Next, we're going to prepare our CPU to accept our new water block by removing the old cooler and wiping off any excess thermal paste. You can use some napkins or Q-tips dipped in isopropyl alcohol to wipe off the thermal paste. If your water block didn't come with thermal paste already applied, you need to reapply thermal paste. Because the Ivy Bridge E set of CPUs is a little larger than standard size CPUs, I like to apply my thermal paste in an X pattern. 
I was fortunate that my water block came already assembled for the LGA 2011 socket and mounting it to the LGA 2011 socket is fairly simple because you don't have to use a back plate. All you need to do is align the four thumb screws and tighten everything down by hand. If your CPU block didn't come pre-assembled, you need to read the instructions to make sure it's compatible with your socket. I've already made a video showing how to install water blocks under your GPUs and preparing them for your water cooling loop. If you want to watch that video, please click on the video playing within this video. The next step is attaching compression fittings or barbs to your reservoirs, pumps, radiators, and water blocks. Be sure that an o-ring is over top the threaded portion so that it can make a watertight seal. I like to make my fittings at least hand tight, then using either a flathead screwdriver or the tool that Monsoon provides, give it another full turn. If you haven't already, now is a good time to install your RAM because it will be very difficult to access the dims once your tubing is installed. Now it's time to mount radiators. Align your radiators with your case fan mounts and you can either screw through the fans, through the case to attach the radiator, or you can directly attach your radiator to the case if you want a push fan configuration. My top mounted radiator has two fans pulling and one fan pushing because this was the only mounting solution I had that guaranteed motherboard and compression fitting clearance. Depending on your case configuration, you may have moments where you need to get creative like this. Before placing our reservoir and pump into the case, we need to attach the tubing because this area will be very difficult to access once it's been installed into your case. So place the tubing over top the compression fitting opening and tighten the nut down over the compression fitting. Hand tight is usually enough. Remember that I said earlier in the video that the order that water flows in your water cooling loop doesn't matter because the water is mixing so quickly among all the sections. Snake the tubing through the 5 and a quarter inch base and route them to where they need to go in your case, and then you can place your reservoir and pump into the base. When measuring out tubing length, always be on the more conservative side. You can always cut more tubing, but you can't always add more tubing. Make your cuts as sharp as possible so that the edge of your tubing can sit flush with the compression fitting. The segments of your water cooling loop that you complete first should be the areas that are going to be most difficult to reach once you have a lot of tubing installed. The area I'm working on was so difficult to reach and because of clearance issues I couldn't use a compression fitting, instead I had to use a right angle barb and a hose clamp. Once you have the tubing flush with the barb, tighten down the compression fitting using a flat head screwdriver. My CPU water block came with half inch barbs installed, so in order to get 3 8 inner diameter tubing to fit over the barbs, you have to dip it in hot water and then stretch it out with pliers. To secure the tubing to the barbs, we have to use another hose clamp. I pretty much told you everything you need to know to finish installing the tubing in your loop and since everybody's loop configuration is going to be different, I'm going to run the rest of the video in which I'm installing tubing in a time lapse fashion until we get to the final steps to completing your water cooling loop.
Now you're ready to fill your loop with water. Before you begin, it's best to place some paper towels over your critical components and under high probability leak areas like under the fittings. To power your pump, you can connect it to your power supply that has been disconnected from all other components or you can connect it to an external power supply. To jump your power supply without having your computer actually turn on, you can use a paper clip to bridge the two wires, I forgot what colors they are, or you can use a jumper tool that you can buy. Fill your reservoir with water and turn on your pump until the water level in your reservoir runs low. Never ever let your pump run dry. This can destroy your pump in a matter of seconds and your warranty won't cover it. Refill your reservoir and run the power on power off cycle until your loop can run without having to be refilled. Let your loop run continuously for at least 6 hours all the while checking for leaks. If you hear some buzzing coming from your pump, it means there's air bubbles going through it and it's pretty normal. You can tilt your PC back and forth a few times to check for the security of your fittings and also to help the air bubbles diminish. If you still have air bubbles by the time you're ready to boot your PC, you can add a few drops of Dawn dish detergent to help speed up the air bubble removal process. Just remember to fill your reservoir with water as needed. Congratulations, you finished building your custom water-cooled PC. Thank you guys very much for watching. Leave a comment in the comment section of this video if you have any questions. Leave a like rating if I was helpful and informative. My name is David and I will see you next video.